What's going on everybody? LK here today with Lord Jam Cross. We are talking about uh, an interesting topic actually. So a couple of weeks ago at this point, Jam Cross uploaded a video called the strongest characters of each archetypes, but there were only five archetypes. Was <laughs> it wasn't archetypes. it wasn't each archetype, technically. <laughs> I, 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 I get I get it though. I get it. I get it. I thought it was a very clean video. So today we are talking about three additional archetypes. So actually on his channel, you want to go over to youtube.com slash jamcrofts. There is another one there with a fun thumbnail that I don't know what it's going to be yet. We're going to talk <laughs> about three other archetypes. And here we're going to talk about three other archetypes. Like other, said, other, okay. other archetypes. Other, yeah. other, other archetypes. So uh, really looking forward to what you have. I, I think the first one we have here is stance characters. Stance characters. Very interesting one to start off with because what do you actually think? I'm asking you, what do you actually think of when you think of a stance character? Like, what character do I think of or like what place? Like, like what, what idea are you thinking? What comes to your mind when you think stance character? Well, a big thing that comes to mind is like using stance change as like a move itself, like stance canceling and stuff. I feel oh, like yeah. that's like a common thing that comes along with stance characters, but I don't know. This one was actually the hardest one for me to think of. Wow. And the reason is because from the games I've played competitively, there are so many. <laughs> there are <laughs> yeah. so many of these characters. They are because, one, you could talk about characters with a stance, right? And stance cancel that like you said. So there's like Leia White Fang, right? So he's got the back turn stance. He can stance cancel a lot of it. It's yeah. two distinct movesets, right? But then you also have mode change characters. So you have like Igis, for example, who she runs around normally, but then you change into Orgia mode and then you can fly around the screen. Uh, you also have characters that technically are have two stances, but like their two nor sets of normals are the same, but it's because they like put something down. So like they don't have the thing. So uh, that's like Lychee, for example, you put the stick down and then you have like different special moves, but your normals are the same, you know, so there's just a lot. There's a lot of characters like this that I could choose from so it was actually pretty hard for me to pick but i didn't manage to pick one we gotta talk about my boy that's on my boy valkenhain r helsing the goat he's a mode change character he has old man mode and Ooh. werewolf mode and he switches between them with a button so when he's in werewolf mode he is extremely fast like fastest walk speed eight-way movement with the drive button. He can whip punish anything anywhere. He has the best anti-air in the game, best mashable anti-air in the game. Amazing corner carry, every button is a 50-50. Just, it's insane. But when he's in old man mode, he's pretty slow. Like his movement is very linear. He has a step dash. It goes a decent length, but he's just not able to move as much. However, do you see how, like, how he has, he's human, but then like his leg is a werewolf? Oh, <laughs> I, I guess I do. It's a little hard to see, but yeah. Yeah, it's a little hard to see. My editor is a goat and he will just get the picture. But he has certain normals. They, they tend to be C normals where he has the, his leg is werewolf legs. Uh, and he has special moves like this as well. And you can cancel these into changing into a werewolf immediately. Well, not immediately with like a little startup. But you can cancel them into that. So it's not just like you're hopping around as an old man type thing. His playstyle is actually, despite him being like not very mobile as a human is, is very, very, very fluid because all you have to do is transform is press the D button. And you're managing, you can see it above my meter, there's a little purple, little purple bar. Yeah. That's that's the werewolf meter. So that's how long you can stay in wolf. He basically is one of the best blue characters of all time. He is almost always top tier originally until finally after this, the classic, after I decided to pick him up, they <laughs> added a patch where they just really gutted him, finally. And then since then, I think they've done a pretty good job of making him fair. They usually have him as like, I see him rated as like high tier usually, where like in classic Blazable, he's always S tier. Yeah, so I think funny. we also saw earlier that like, you got a hit as the werewolf, and then you turned into the guy like to do the follow-up combo. So that seems mm -hmm. nice, because like you can win neutral as this super fast mix-up heavy character, and then recharge meter as the guy mm -hmm. you you really switch between the two in a very fluid way it's probably like the main skill floor of him it, it's really easy to move around as a werewolf but it's you learn like where you have to switch and like how to manage your meter and things like that and it's not like the offense of the human version is bad too because when you have 50 meter you can 50 50 people with like instant overhead jump c or like sweep so yeah i think it's probably the best example there's a lot 
of examples. I kind of want to talk about Aegis because she's crazy and she's an evil winning character also. She won the first Persona Evo. Uh, I guess she's very, very strong also, but I think he's just been strong overall longer for like more versions than her. So I decided to go with him and I played him. That's my go. I, I love Falcon 9. <laughs> I love he seems so really much. cool. I've literally, I don't think I've ever fought this character or played as him. Surprisingly, really not cool. a surprisingly not a popular character in the US at the time uh, when he came out. Not a waifu. So. Not a waifu. No one's picking him. True. This might be, this might be a uh, unexpected choice. We'll see. Skullgirls. We're playing some Skullgirls. So I, I I might be cheating here. I might be cheating. The character that I am picking today is Ms. Fortune. So Ms. Fortune, she is a lot of things, okay? She is a stance character. She is a puppet character. She's obviously like a rushdown mix-up character. But the, the basics of her two stances are she has a head-on stance and head-off stance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So she can remove the head from her body and she kind of becomes a puppet character. So now the heavy punch button essentially becomes my head button. Uh, and then whenever you feel like it, you can bring the head back and then you're back into head on mode. And now heavy punch button is like this really powerful set of attacks. So you kind of have to make this decision. You can have access to moves like this, her longest range poke, this, her high damage and uh, hard or far reaching launcher down H. This jump in as well is really good and she can only do it with her head on. So you lose access to some of these moves. Uh, also like this move you can't do without her head because she like literally balances on her head. And also the head throw itself is a really powerful move uh, because it staggers the opponent. So you can basically just dash up and do whatever you want after. So she has more powerful moves when she has her head on. Uh, but obviously like having a puppet that can act independently is like really broken as well. So it's a fun little like kind of decision process you have to make. And during different parts of the match, like it might be better to have access to moves like this. She has that head throw as well. So like you, you have to make the decision, which I really like that aspect of her of like, I'm giving up a bunch of my good moves in exchange for this, this little, this little goober here. Also her super changes as well. So uh, it's basically the same super, but you can see with her head on, she like headbutts you at the end and gets a hard knockdown. So that's an unteckable knockdown. Uh, but with the head off, um, the super is like this. She launches you away and you can see the opponent can tech the knockdown. So you get like no Oki off that. So her super for ending her combos becomes a lot worse uh, without the head as well. So uh, yeah, that's the basic idea. She's not the type of character where you're gonna be like switching between them like multiple times per combo. That's just definitely not possible. But yeah, you can you can play like, oh yeah, she has this move as well. Like this is multi-hit, like long range attack with the head on. And then without the head, it just becomes this, this one hit thing. No child. Uh, so yeah, I think she's a really cool character design and when she was like at, at launch when the game was pretty new She was like absurdly top tier mm -hmm. Th This character this. was absolutely ridiculous and I think that she's been nerfed over the years But I, I haven't been keeping up with the meta of Skullgirls, but I'm pretty sure she's still considered very strong Just not like to the degree she was at launch because she was crazy man. But I yeah, I really like the character and I think she's really unique and one of the the more like inventive designs that they've come up with. So uh, yeah, big fan of Misfortune. Yeah, it, it falls in line, right, too. Like, so when you you lose your heavy button, basically, right? But like a lot of the other normals are the same. Yeah, like heavy yeah. button only does head attacks though. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's interesting to think about this type of character in like various different games, because I won't pretend I know too much about 3D fighters, but when they talk about stance characters, they're literally talking about like, yeah, they have like, this stance, that stance, and like you just move between the, them. Yeah, like like, a, like you go into the stance, and then that has like four different follow ups or whatever. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where like this, this, this is a type of thing I was thinking about. Where it's like, oh, you do this, and then like you have something different, and it's definitely a different mode, and you have different special moves. But then like your normals are the same, and like ish. Uh, it, it's a very open archetype, actually. Yeah, there are like you said, there are a lot of stance characters, but. Um, yeah, I think it's there there are different ways that the developers can approach it, I guess. Next, we got fast grapplers. Fast grapplers. So this is another kind of weird-ish archetype. But I don't think this one is as open, I wanna say, as stance characters. Like there's like so many. I mostly say this for a couple of reasons. One, technically, it's not 
that common in my wheelhouse, at least. I think just in KOF, actually, they have a lot of fast grapplers. They might KOF just is like all fast grapplers for the yeah. most part. Fast grappler home. If you want a simple definition, it's like slow grapplers is what we expect, like the big body, Zangi, Potemkin, Taker type characters, mm -hmm. where uh, fast grapplers, I mean, the most basic definition would be characters with normal mobility or special faster mobility and also has a command grab. But a really common joke in Guilty Gear, like let's say Exert, are people go like, oh, Johnny and Soul are actually the best grapplers and not Potemkin because right. they can like, Soul has comboable wild throw, Johnny has comboable throw, just his normal throw is comboable in that game. Or like Elfelt is another one, like Elfelt has shotgun command grab, which is not, you can't tech it, you can't throw it. It's throw invincible and it leads into a, like an unblockable setup. It's not as straightforward a uh, definition as let's say like a like your traditional grappler. Another way you can call them actually is uh, not honest, honestly just non-traditional grappler, but we just tend to call them fast grapplers for some reason. It's multi but Oh hell yeah, we're back. Yeah. So this game actually has a couple of characters that have these type of non-traditional grappler aspects. So, for example, like, Miyako can, like, combo off her throw, to my memory. And then, of course, the, the, Koma is actually one of the GOAT classic anime, for, for me, by the way. If you haven't mm -hmm. if you haven't played this game, he both can set play you and is a grappler. Like, he has, like, left-right mix-ups, too. Like, system left-right mix-ups that, like, break cross and protection and stuff. He's, he's super cool. He's a really fun character to play. But if there's one that we have to talk about, Kohaku, of course. So, yeah, it's my, this is my original actress again main. We were even picked by the old color. So actually, in this version, she's not super amazing, but I, I picked her because in the previous version, the PS2 version, she's the best character in the game. So this game has a, a groove system sim similar to CVS2, right? So, but instead, you know, this game's about vampires, so it's all like nighttime theme. So it's crescent moon, half moon, and full moon. The baseline reason why this character is like a it's one of those like a bunch of things come together and that's why the character is good. So, uh, and I'm, I'm going to be talking about it from a PS2 perspective. Of course, in this version, some of these things don't apply the same way because they nerfed her, rightfully so. For starters, for starters, this is like, this is the normal C Kohaku dash, but then she's just, she's just like a crumb faster. It's a crumb, a crumb faster. But then also she has slightly, I mean, they all have different normals. So one big advantage that she has, uh, specifically for talking about a grappler. So you notice the C Kohaku, this is going to whiff. Mm -hmm. I, it, might, it might hit like taller characters. I never really played C Kohaku, but. What the sense. heck? So this this is really strong. So not only do you hit crouchers, but it also means you can use for pressure and to stop jumps. The one that doesn't hit crouching, C Kohaku, so you can use it to stop jumps also. But not so much in pressure, as much for neutral, where this you could use it for both. That's one really big one. Uh, she has very large normals. So this is, this is her 2C. This is her jump B. One thing that's really uncommon in this game is having moves that cross up. What people would normally do is they'll do something like this. Like, let's say they'll do that. They'll, they'll, they have to like turn themselves around. Uh, one really bad habit some players had is they'll do like, uh, they'll do like this. And they'll use the air dodge to turn themselves around. Mm. And I, in my opinion, I always thought it was a bad habit. I don't know if people still do that, but when I was playing, a lot of people would do that. And I'm like, why do you do that? I also am very privileged because this character, the Half Moon version, has an actual move that hits behind, which is, come on, buddy. There you go. Which is very uncommon in this game to have a move that hits like that. It's extremely uncommon, actually. Very, 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 very uncommon to have that. Uh, it's definitely an advantage. Uh, then there's the command grab itself. Here is Sikohaku's. So she has like this follow-up thing. Some of them will do like this and they'll whiff it. Uh, let me see if I can get the whiff. Yeah, they'll whiff it. And if I recall correctly, the whiff gives you more frame advantage and you could set up like plants and stuff like that. Mm. Mines is not quite like this. So mines, okay, they can air tech. Okay, so you, you can actually combo, which is and big. That, and that's not techable. That's it's for real. The throw, it's command grab, so you can't take it. Oh no, I mean like the combo is. is oh, a real the combo. combo. Okay, for example, simple, very simple. Yeah. You could do like a full combo. A very big thing about this command grab is a couple things. One is the actual grab. So, uh, this is what a normal throw looks like on whiff. Okay, but this is what the command grab looks like. 
It looks pretty it's much the same. Yeah, on whip. That's on whip. So when you whip it, it's not even that bad. If they jump it, it's not the end of the world. A really important thing about this grab, right, is so you can combo. So if I do like a, a very baby combo again. Baby combo, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm using half moon because they have a mechanic actually where when the meter fills, you burst automatically when you get hit. Other modes, you can burst like manually when you have like max meter. So what happened normally here is if I hit her, okay, it's called circus part. Gotcha. So now, but if I grab, you can't, you cannot burst. What? <laughs> so any, any combo you do that starts from a grab, you can't burst. So she has an untackable throw to command grab. You can combo out of. That you also can't burst out of. Uh, why? 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 <laughs> why can't you burst? You just can't. It's just it's, it's just, just a, a rule. It's just a rule of the game. If you get comboed out of a throw, you just cannot burst the whole time. That's okay. ridiculous. That's very very strong. Uh, she also she can take away your meter like this. Two. So you get locked out of your meter for a little bit in the case that uh. you, you have meter available. So. That's also very strong in case like the opponent is still alive. And on top of that too, there she has an unblockable setup. 50-50 uh, uh, or unblockable. I will say for this version, I think it's more of a 50-50. But uh, in the previous version, there, there are just not a lot of ways to get out of this. This move cannot be cannot be parried. You cannot shield this projectile like at all, basically. Mm -hmm. So if, if I do this, she, she, she's always gonna try to like, like shield, I'm gonna try to get the the bomb to actually hit her. I don't, I don't know if there's a way to make it to make it with this bomb, but this explosion is like the only thing in the game you can't parry. So you can end a combo where you have the bomb on them, and you grab them at the same time, at almost the same time, like that. Right. Yeah, and and you can get it from your command grab combo. Also, like your big boy combos lead into the knockdown. We can set the bomb. So it sets up a really, really nasty situation. And in the previous version, she did way more damage. So so there were times, some characters, you could like two touch them uh, if you have the execution or like three touch them, which is not super common. And I guess it's more common in this version. Huh? It, it, you just get this from like so many situations and using a lot of exceptions in the game to like just mix people up all the time. It's it's a really 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 powerful character, honestly. The character concept. It seems like she she's got grappler elements and just like set play yeah. elements as well. It, it, it's it's a combination of both. It's it's kind of an unblockable in this version. There's like more characters have more ways of getting out of it. But like in the PS2 version, there were barely any characters. Like if you didn't have a DP, or if you didn't have like meter to use like heat if you're playing if you're playing like crescent moon you can get out of it you can like gamble out of it and stuff but a lot of characters had really had problems getting out of this and if she baits you she kills you because she has a ton of damage like yeah. way 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 too much damage all right i see yeah 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 this character this is this is my first this is the character that gave me my first major win that's how you know she's broken <laughs> if, if, you, if you think i suck if you think i suck this character helped me win majors so that's how you know she's really broken the hard carry yeah <laughs> I, i'm saying I have a character that carries as well. I think everyone probably saw this coming. Alex? No. Hard no, carry? No, no. Hard carry? It's Makoto, of course. Makoto. You know, you, you get this conversation too in this game, right? Because Yun has a command grab. Yeah. Right? Yun and Yang both. Yeah. So you, you have that combo too. It's like how Johnny's the best grappler. Like, is, yeah. Is it, is it Yun the best grappler? But the thing is, Makoto is not that much worse than Yun. Makoto is actually cracked. So you might think that she's a slow grappler, right? Because her walk speed, her walk speed leaves a little bit to be desired. But then you realize her dash speed. Uh, her dash duration is so low and it travels so far. So like basically this character can just like do this at any time and you're just guessing. Uh, it's so, so hard to react to her dash. So that's basically what makes her a fast grappler. I, also, obviously she has like rush punch, which covers a lot of distance, but this is unsafe on block. So it's a little dangerous to be thrown out. But yeah, this character's command grab is actually so broken. So you talked about the uh, the fact that Kohaku command grab, like um, if they if they jump out, uh, they can't punish it or anything. And it's the same with Makoto. Like the recovery on her command grab is so short that is really hard for me to do with two hands but basically like 
if you whiff command grab like this, like if they, if you command grab and they jump, you can always parry their jumping attack on the way down. Mm. So like if they jump out of your command grab, you're still in a fine situation. Uh, and obviously if the command grab hits, um, they you like cry. So you, you she does massive clip. damage on the command grab. Her trademark thing that you guys have probably seen in tournament is <laughs> uh, command grab into her super too. So if you guys don't know about this, there's actually a limitation. If I'm far on the screen, you see how Makoto is past the timer. Mm -hmm. If we're far on the screen, we actually can't do it. It'll it'll uncombo if you do if you do the heavy version. You just don't have enough time, and the other versions don't reach. So if she's past the timer, it doesn't work. So you kind of have to be smart. And you have to play around being in front of the timer. But then once you are, you can do this, into this, into a huge, huge amount of damage. And I can't do it. I've done it one time in my life. The uh, Kara, the the Kara DP combo. Mm -hmm. I've done it one time in my life. You can you can do her super and then do three of these in one combo, and it stuns any character who doesn't have a long stun bar. But against characters with low stun bars, like Akuma, Remy, characters like that, she just destroys them. Because like any hit, you're gonna get stunned. She doesn't even have to do like her hardest combos. She just does like anything. And uh, yeah, you're just gonna cry. So she's massively damaging. And also like her pokes are really good too. Like this move is so good. She has like good anti-airs for different ranges too. Like that's a good anti-air, that one's good. Uh, her sweep is good. Like she's just good at everything except walking. Basically, <laughs> she's actually so cheap. So, you know, obviously the villains of this game are like Yun and Chun. I I honestly think that she's probably like the the third or fourth best character. Like Ken is really good too, but like Makoto might be better than Ken. Yeah, I, I think something about this type of character is that like since it's not that common, depending on what game you boot up. If someone like knows the game, they're like, oh, you're going to talk about this thing because it's not like super, super common. But it, I feel like it's a really strong argument. Like when it exists, it's very strong. Yeah, I, I think usually like the idea is that a slow grappler is going to like struggle the whole round and then they get in once and they try to win the round off it. Right. Whereas like a fast grappler, they can play neutral. They can hang. And they're not like as rewarded when they get the grab. Makoto is rewarded play. better than a slow grappler. <laughs> Cause like yeah. a slow grappler, yeah, they get like SPD and a knockdown and then they make you guess. But she gets this command grab and then you just die. There's mm -hmm. there's no guess, you're just dead. Yeah, uh, it, so yeah. It, that's what you want to say. You're like, oh, they get it and they grab you and they don't have as much re reward. But like Kwaku unblockables you and then like Makoto stuns you instantly. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's th this character. And like th the fact that like this combos and like this combos and like this combos, like ev everything just combos with this character. It just feels like everything works. Yeah, she's she's so good. Classic pick. We do have one more though. So to take us out, funny enough, he did fast grappler. And the next one is really close to this actually. It is uh, the mids dispenser, the dispenser of mids. Right? I see where you're going. It's similar because it's very similar. throw is their only mix up. <laughs> one thing though is this type of character has become much, 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 much more common. I want to say since like Street Fighter V era, this mm -hmm. type of character is much, 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 much more common. This is another one where I had a ton of picks. What's funny about this too is like a lot of the characters I thought of when the idea of a mint dispenser comes into my head is different than uh, when I think of Fast Grappler. I actually could not, it was very difficult for me to think of another character that's not Kohaku. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, oh, Kohaku, right? Uh, easy. I was like, all right, I got it. But I was like, who else? If, if someone said you can't talk about her, who else kind of fits this? And I was like, hmm, because technically you want to talk about a, a mobile character or at least not a slow character with a command grab. But in, again, in Guilty Gear, they have the joke of more more Johnny, Johnny, Soul, Elfel. So there's a bunch of characters that can combo up the grabs and then there's Potemkin, <laughs> you know? So mid dispensers, they have a huge, depending on the game, right? Huge amount. So like, let's say Dragon Ball, I went on my list for Dragon Ball mid dispensers. I just wrote LOL. <laughs> so that's many. mid dispenser the game <laughs> that's mid dispenser the game or um you know there is there's the clip 
You lose to fucking throws and mids. You can hold my nuts. Bamboo on launch had a bunch of mid dispensers. Drive has a bunch of mid dispensers. Blaze Blue has a bunch of mid dispensers. I really, 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 really want to talk about Blaze Blue, but I'm not gonna use Blaze Blue again. I'm gonna use a game. Oh, that I didn't really use. Oh, hey, yes, Persona. it's Persona, yes. So, so I had to really think because again, there's a lot of examples over the various games I played, which I think is kind of funny considering like anime games. You know, anime games they don't really have they're known for like high speed set play bullshit zoning, but it's just a ton, a ton in the various games I played. I actually was thinking of picking another character from another game, but I was like, I think Persona needs a little bit of love. And I wanted to show a character that I mained before. For PS4, you can't get the vanilla version of this game. Anyone who watched my channel, you know I'm gonna talk about my girl. Uh, of course. Of course, uh, of course, the money maker, the, the sugar mama. So one thing she has in common, she doesn't have in common with a lot of mid dispensers in more modern fighting games is that she doesn't really have any plus moves. Like uh, one thing that many modern mid dispenser characters have is they'll have at least one like scary plus move. Like if you block the plus move, you go, oh, oh snap, right? That's the thing they really complain about. But Mitsuru is kind of the opposite. So since her range is so massive, she doesn't really have plus stuff. What she uses to threaten you is range. Cause she could attack you from really, really far. Uh, in the vanilla version of the game, this game has a system like Blaze Blue where your, your body is split into parts, like, like in real life, right? So you have a head, body, and foot. But in this version, they added an extra property called chest because this move is so broken that many characters could not deal with you just doing this. Like some characters, your pressure is literally you just do this from max range and you can't, they just can't fight you. Because in this game also, so there's a window where you can't block when you jump. Uh, it's a five frame window. So jump startup of four frames plus an additional five frames where you can't block. In vanilla, when you're using this, it's really hard to jump against this because you have to worry about two you had the ability to delay the second one as well you had to worry about her like running up or, or just standing here and waiting for you and you're in like a disadvantaged position she also has a lot of, like feints and a lot of advancing moves too so you have like your b button both retreats and advances and you could charge it to go further or or further back like this and it's also airborne too so if someone is attacking throws you just smoke them right uh, she also has this as a throw bait as well. So you just boop. So she has really high reward ways of hitting you for throw teching that also hits you for jumping, depending on how your jump timing, which is pretty scary. And she can combo off her throw. Okay, so she can combo off her throw as well. Specifically to, they nerfed this in Ultimax, rightfully so. So you have a character that has all these mid dispenser things and good strike throw, but the old ice mirror didn't appear behind it appeared in front it was like agus reflector it hits like three times uh it freezes on hit and you could do high low mix-ups off it so it would, it would look more like uh this version even though you don't usually use this move like this so you could do like this type of thing that's an instant overhead or you would do low and it loops into itself so you had a character that had really good range really good anti-air really good air versus air also anti-zoning Anti zoning, so you play all ranges. If you're chilling up here, no. Chilling down here, no. Uh, and then bully you, and you don't really have good ways of getting out. Most characters don't have good ways of gambling against this. If she hits you, you die. And if you respect, you also die because she combos off her throw. Because this was a period where Arxis was like, the throw is like techable, kinda. So, you know, <laughs> you know, why not get a combo off your throw? So you get a combo off throw into this, into this. And then you 50 50 them <laughs> until they die or they burst. Hell yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. And you, you wanna know how she's broken? Because I want mad majors of her and got second at Evo. You know she's broken if, she, if I'm doing that shit, bro. Keeping it real. I am I am so triggered by this character. Love this, this character. Is, this is such a negative memories for me. Love this character. Love this character. Love this character. From you know what's actually heart. like this is it's scrubby, but my least favorite thing about this character is DP into super. I got smoked by DP into super on block so many times. I have to politely say skill issue. It's not even close I, to her is. best thing. It is. <laughs> It's not even close You're to not wrong. Thing. And I would play Kanji, I'd just be like, all right, it's my time. I blocked the DP. Pain. Pain. The thing is, there's some people who don't agree with me. I am a very stalwart person. I think she's the best character in vanilla. Some people would say Chia is the best character in vanilla, and she is also a, a mid-dispenser too. 
Uh, but I mean, I made me to this, so I, I got, I gotta talk about, I gotta talk about the character I made. I love this character. All right, I, I respect the pick. I mm -hmm. think it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so this one was actually pretty hard for me because I actually feel like mid dispenser isn't really like a thing outside of anime games because in a game like Street Fighter, it's just expected that everyone's a mid dispenser, right? There's not really high low. The mix up is strike versus throw for like the majority, other than like grapplers. But there's one character that I thought kind of epitomized the style in Street Fighter setting here. And we're going to take a look at Balrog. Vanilla Balrog was a very, very powerful character in this game. Uh, you guys might remember Evo Grand Finals. The first time this was at Evo, Justin mm -hmm. Wong got second playing Balrog. And uh, this character, I remember this was like a big learning experience character for me because I kind of didn't understand why you would ever get hit. This was my first fighting game. And I was like, why would you actually get hit by this character? He has no cross up. Mm -hmm. he, he has no overhead. Well, he has this overhead, but this is like so slow that even as a beginner, I didn't really get hit by this move. Mm -hmm. he, he has no mix. He just has throw. So it's like, why would you ever get hit by? And this game has crouch tech. Mm -hmm. This game has one of the strongest anti-throw option selects we've in ever history, seen. In yeah. yeah, 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 actually. Like, this is so, so, so safe. It is so hard to punish people mashing crouch tech. And yet this character was still extremely strong. And like, it's it's really just because his walk speed is so good. So his shimmy power is really, really good. Obviously, like you, you, you do like a jab and then they have to be really scared between jab into throw or jab into shimmy. And his shimmying tools are really, really good. So a lot of his normals are pretty ridiculous. So like close roundhouse, this is one of the stupidest normals ever. It's like plus three on block. You get you get hella combos off this on hit. There we go. So yeah, you get hella combos off this on hit. And uh, he has three frame crouch jab, insanely good. Mm -hmm. And he can link jab into sweep in vanilla. And we already, we talked in my other video that uh, being able to land a sweep in this game is really good, but it's not for the reason that it's good with a character like Akuma, because literally this character has no mix. Mm -hmm. he, has, he has nothing. I remember just being so confused, like, what do I do on a knockdown if I can't cross them up? <laughs> like, what's what am I supposed to apply here? But literally you just make them block. And then you make them guess, all right, am I gonna am I gonna hit you? Am I gonna do like stagger pressure, like, you know, sticking out his really, really good normals, or am I gonna throw you? That's literally all it took. And this character was ridiculous. So I, I actually have a really big soft spot for this character because I think he's really fun to play. He's a really unique play style. In the older games, he was much more of like a hardcore like rush down, like just keep going in and like applying pressure and stuff like that. But in this game, he's very much like mid range, neutral, uh, utilizing big normals, utilizing plus frames and shimmying type of character. So I think he's really, really fun to me. What, when you were explaining things about Mitsuru, like combos off her throw, obviously you can't combo off your throw in this game, but the fact that he like punishes you really bad for whiffing a throw, that's like majorly true in this game. So th those types of things that make a character a good mid dispenser, I think definitely applies to him as well. Mm -hmm. You make a good point too. Like the only reason we have that as a character archetype is because there's just so much like shenanigans, you know, there's like puppet characters and then there's like all sorts of like zoning characters, trap characters, like extra fast characters and a Chodo. Yeah. yeah. And like mix up characters, all these things, all these variety of things. So like it's maybe a thing that's unique to anime fighters specifically where we're like, yeah, there's just a type of character that's plus two and then they throw <laughs> you or they run up or they wait. One, it drives people crazy. People hate it. <laughs> people hate fighting it. But like Street Fighter is that's just Street Fighter. Yeah. 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 With, with a few except I mean, you know, yeah, there's yeah. weirdos <laughs> like like El Fuerte and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, for the most part, not many characters have unreactable mix other mm -hmm. than Thrust. It's, un it's uncommon. It's really, really uncommon. Where yeah. it's like the opposite. We're like it's very common in like a normal anime fighter for there to be like uh, at, at least like a standard type of mix, you know, like a like Strive would be like land low or air dash back high. Or like the classic anime one would be like delay air dash high or land low like that type of thing where uh street fighters the opposite like you probably don't have like demon flip or tatsu or yeah. low you know what i mean and you probably don't have that you have to do like something else it's kind of interesting to think about but yeah, yeah. that's uh that's mm -hmm. my last pick all right so that's uh three more of the strongest asterisks for bias because i want to talk about <laughs> characters i made 
<laughs> the strongest and most important. Uh, most important. Just... Yeah, the strongest and most important characters of uh, different archetypes. Again, Jam Crofts has one on his channel where we talk about a couple other archetypes. Where should the people find you? Uh, YouTube.com slash JM Crofts. That's about it. Smash that sub button yes. here and on my channel. Yes. Do it on both. Yes, please. Thank you so much. Uh, YouTube really likes it if you click this. So probably what I'll do is I'll put the other video here so that you don't even have to type in YouTube. You can just click JM Cross video from here and we'll see you guys next time. Peace out.